Hey everybody, welcome to my booth. I'm Jay, and today we're going to talk about Isotope's RX Repair Suite and how to use a bunch of different plugins in your DAW. Let's just dive right in, shall we? So I've got Adobe Audition open here, and the first thing that I want to show you is if for some reason your plugins aren't showing up here, so over on the effects rack, if I give this a click, go down to AU, I see Isotope there. It'll also be in uh, these various other ones potentially, but for me, it's in the AU region. If it's not showing up, the way to get it to show up is to go up to Effects, down to Audio Plugin Manager, ta-da, and then just click Scan for Plugins. It'll sweep your computer, find those plugins, and bring them into Adobe Audition. Additionally, if you're feeling overwhelmed by the sheer number of plugins available to you, you can simply unclick the ones that you're not interested in having around anymore, and uh, they'll leave you alone for the time being until you click them back in. In Reaper, it's much the same process. So if I pull that open here, they're not showing up for me. I just go up to Reaper, Settings, and there's this little plugins drop down menu, and many of these will have a rescan button there. And it will scan a specific library where your plugins are. Uh, Reaper, in my experience, differs a little bit from Adobe Audition in that it scans automatically when you update the program or when you open the program ever. Um, I don't know if Adobe Audition does that as well, and to be honest, I don't really know if Reaper does that every time, but that's it, it, take that for what it's worth. Now, let's dive in on how to use these different plugins. I've got a bunch of different samples here. The first is my favorite Christopher Robin uh, and Winnie the Pooh sample, and we'll use this one to talk about the D clickers. So if I pull open both of these versions of the D clicker, the D clicker by itself and the specifically mouth D clicker, many folks get confused about what the difference is between these two and why the mouth D clicker comes in the more expensive, like $400 version of Isotope RX versus the less expensive that comes with the essentials, i.e. $100 version, the D clicker. To demystify that right out of the gate, the only functional difference is the mouth D clicker is specifically tuned to mouth sounds, whereas the D clicker is more broadly applicable. Folks may not use that to repair mouth sounds. They may use it for other stuff. And what that means functionally is that because the D clicker has wider applications, wider abilities to fix other types of things, it uses more computer processing power. For a bit of context, I, I recorded and rendered out the same about one hour long chapter from an audiobook using both of these plugins. The mouth D clicker was about 10 times faster rendering out that hour long audiobook, 10 times faster, whereas this just took a bit longer. But hey, if your time is worth money or if you don't mind waiting around, there you go. Easy peasy. Now let's talk a bit about how to use it. So they'll be used largely the same. Uh, we'll start with the mouth D clicker to begin with. This sensitivity slider, exactly what it sounds like. A low sensitivity, it's gonna be pretty loosey goosey, eh, whatever. And if we dial this all the way up, it's gonna start to be pretty ruthless about what it terms a click. So much so that it may start hearing words and sounds in your speech, for example, the word click itself. If you have a particularly punchy CK at the end of that word, click, it might, detect that CK and say, ah, uh, uh, no thank you, and remove it. Uh, and that can be a bit of a problem. So for me, I usually find that a, you know, medium to medium, medium plus sensitivity is good for me. The frequency skew is uh, exactly what it sounds like again. It will either detect more so in the higher frequency sounds or in the lower frequency sounds. So if we go down here to this spectral view and we zoom in, we'll probably see some clicks because I'm human and I'm not perfect. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we've got one-ish here. Kind of a click. 
and you can see it gets all the way up to the higher frequencies and that's where it becomes more egregious for me in my experience. So I usually skew a little bit higher. This is something that I think will change depending on you, your physiology, the way that your body clicks, as it were. The last little section here is the click widening. So if and when we find a click, what this does is it tells the plugin how far around said click to repair, basically. So if I have it at zero, it's just gonna take a line all the way through that click, smooth it out as best it can. Whereas if I make it really wide, it will take a broad section around that click and repair around it a fair amount. Uh, this, for me, I usually put at 0 0.03 just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room in the fixing of these clicks, but you don't really need to mess with that. Going over to the D-clicker, same exact things. Sensitivity, slide it as sensitive as you want. Click widening, slide it as clicky, widened as you want. The difference is this algorithm drop-down menu. The beauty is, it also has presets here for you. Mouth noise, multiband, mouth noise, single band. The difference between those two, multiband will give you access to this frequency skew dial. And single band, that goes away. The difference being the multiband will listen to sections of your audio, low frequency sounds, mid, high frequency sounds, whereas single band, it's going to listen to the whole thing at once, more or less. Uh, so those are the differences between them. Play around with it and see what works best for you. To give you a before and after, we'll listen to this audio uh, without the D-clicker, and then we'll add it and see what happens. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. So there, that was with it off. Now let's see what it sounds like with it on. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. So it's fairly subtle, but it does a really, really great job at transparently just removing a little bit of that mouth noise. Next, let's talk about how to use the Voice Denoise plugin. This is something that I use more situationally or if I'm using a microphone that has a higher self noise or background noise than usual. The Shure SM7B, for example, has a sort of in the background uh, and you can fix that if you wish or attenuate it you can't really fix everything by using this plugin um, the way it works is it will sample the room tone of your space and attenuate based off of that so i have two samples here this is room tone with my booth door closed and this over here is room tone with my booth door open and you can see the stark differences this is pretty dead quiet and this has a little bit more going on the way to use this plugin in this instance is there are two sort of modes adaptive mode and with that off I prefer to use it off, but as an example, with adaptive mode on, it will shift its settings based off of your speech and the sound coming through. So if we play this. Hey there, everybody. This is Jay. Welcome to my booth. So if you hear it there, it wasn't on the whole time. Uh, I clicked it on in the middle of that, but you can hear. There's the background sound. Hey there, everybody. This is Jay. Welcome to my booth. And the reason I don't like adaptive mode is it has sort of that noise gatey artifact where you can hear it sort of jockeying back and forth, which is why I prefer to use this off. The way to use it off is to select room tone, and we'll use this section with my door open because it has the most background noise. Then we click learn to engage the learning aspect of this. And in this, it will listen as long as I play and take a reading of the background noise there. Uh, I like to click on this loop here just to make sure that it stays within these bounds and I can let it run and get an average. 
So let's give it a shot. Great, so you can see here, it set a waveform to attenuate all of that room tone, that hiss. And that's all you need to do. These settings over here, the threshold, you can either dial up to be a little bit more aggressive in the attenuation, or a little bit less so if you don't mind it as much. The reduction tab, uh, this will reduce the background noise less and more. For myself, I've found that leaving this at the factory settings is more than sufficient to tackle it, uh, but feel free to play around with it. If we're using it on the room tone with my door closed, this is what it looks like. Again, we'll click Learn. I've highlighted this section. I've engaged the loop so that it stays within this time selection, and we'll give it a play and watch how this changes. Great. So it's a much less aggressive curve because obviously my space is pretty sound isolated already, but there you go. And that's all you need to do. That's how you use this one, and it will repair a bit of that background noise. The next one that we'll talk about is the D plosive. This is a plugin that I use very situationally. So I intentionally popped the crap out of my microphone here, and you can see it in the waveforms where they get all squiggly and erratic uh, and get ready to cringe. Peter Piper picked up. So it's really, really bad. This would be the kind of thing where I would need to retake it. But as a sort of worst case scenario repair situation, I would use this tool if it was the perfect take, the perfect audition, but I just popped the mic a little bit and I really don't want to retake it and try to have to recreate that magic. Uh, this I would only use for an audition. If it were for a job, I would re-record it. But in an audition setting, I find it, you know, okay uh, in most cases. And the way I will do that is simply highlight exactly the section where I popped the microphone. And I just leave this at the factory settings. And that's it. So there's a bad pop here. And we'll apply to selection. And you can see how that waveform changed pretty significantly. We'll give it a listen now. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So it does still sound pretty artifact heavy. I'm not using a pop filter here, but uh, it will help you there if you need to just preserve that singular perfect take in an audition setting. The next uh, plugin we'll talk about is the de -esser. This functions the same as any old de you will ever use, and it will just attenuate specific frequencies of the sound. So there are two different modes or algorithms, classic versus spectral. I don't touch spectral because that's too much thinking for me, but if you're a audio engineer, that may be more applicable to you. Uh, and the cutoff frequency, this is where it will stop attenuating sound. So if you can dial in where your S's are, where they start, where they stop, uh, you can raise this up to um, not attenuate all of those. To track that down, you can click Output S Only. A very important note, you must make sure when you're rendering or applying this, to de-click that box, because if you don't, it will still sound like this when you render it. So, unclick the box, but to uh, track down those S's, we can just put output S only, click that box, and simply slide this up until we stop hearing S's. Great. Uh, so that's fine for now. Uh, you can go less if you want or more if you want. And then this is the threshold where it's going to start attenuating. This is a effectively a compressor. So you can just start dialing this back and forth until you hit a point where you feel it's comfortable. I like to see this number being anywhere from minus three to minus six. Too aggressive, and it starts to sound a little overly processed. Let's give it a try. Sell seashells by the seashore. 
Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Great, and that's all you need to do. So if we apply that here, it will change this waveform a bit. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Sounds okay to me. The last plugin I will show you that I use again only if I need to is the D Clip plugin. This, as you can see in my waveform here, I absolutely blew out this microphone because I was screaming. It sounds like this. Oh no! So I've clipped. And what this plugin does, you can see it there, it's just repairing said clip. The way to do this is I'll select the section that I've clipped and engage this, and then I just dial in the threshold of where I want this to end up. Uh, usually, I put my stuff at minus three. Uh, it's pretty arbitrary. It's sort of a thing to dial in depending on what the recording is and where this is relative to the rest of your audio. But if I apply this, it brings everything down a little bit more. Oh, no! And it just sounds a little bit cleaner. Uh, again, deplosive, declip. Uh, those are two that I will use very, very situationally and only really when I do not have the ability to do a retake. And that's it. That's how you use Isotope RX's repair suites in your DAW. One last note, if you... Uh, wish to use them in the Isotope RX window. The reasons I've found this window helpful is if I need to do really, really specific repairs, and that's really the only reason I would use it. Uh, the retaking, re-recording um, ability in this uh, editor is pretty difficult for me to navigate. So I just opt to use my DAW, where it's easier and I'm much more fluid. So, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or if I got anything wrong, heaven forbid, let me know down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until the next one of these, be well, y'all. Toodles.